Hi there. Now in this video what I want to do is introduce you to various operations that we use in set theory. And to demonstrate this I've got these sets here. I'm taking the universal set to be the integers from 1 to 10 and then I've got various subsets here A, B, C and D. Now the first operation I want to look at is this one. It's called A intersection B and it represents the members or elements that are common to both the sets A and B, the two sets that we have surrounding this symbol. So for example if we are asked to find A intersection B for these two sets here then we're looking for the members or elements that are common to both sets and that would be equal to the set of numbers well I can see that 1 is common and then we've got the 2 that's common, the 3 that is common and then just the 5 here that is common. 6 and 7 we just leave out. Notice that I don't repeat the 1's or the 2's etc. Okay, I just write it once. Now the next thing I want to show you is this one here. It's pronounced A union B. And this represents the members or elements that are in set A or B or both of them. I tend to think of this symbol union as joining together, representing all the elements in both these two sets that you see either side of the sign. So in this example A union B here is going to represent the set of all elements that you see contained in both A and B. We just merge them, join them together. So what would that set of numbers be? Well I can see that we've got a 1 in both sets, a 2, a 3, 4, 5, 6 and a 7. And that would be the set of elements A union B. Now the next operation I want to show you is this one here where we put a dash outside of a set. It's pronounced the complement. Okay, So here we've got a complement and it represents members or elements that are not in the set that you write here. In this case the set A. So in this example a complement when we've got the set A here we're looking for all the values that are not in this set that are contained within the universal set here. So in this example then those members or elements are going to be a 7, an 8, a 9 and a 10. Okay these are elements that you don't see in this set but are contained within the universal set. So there you have it the three operations intersection, union and complement that you're likely to meet when working with sets. Now I've got a few more examples which I would encourage you to have a go at. I've picked these just so that it demonstrates some other ideas. So do have a go at these okay just give you a moment to pause the video before I run through them. Okay let's see how you got on if you had a go. Now for this one here A intersection C then we're looking for elements or members that are common to both sets A and C. And what we've got here is just the 2 and the 4. They occur in both A and C. You can see that C is a subset of A. It's contained within it. So for this one then the answer is the elements, the two elements 2 and 4. Now for the next one we've got A union C. So we're looking to join together if you like the sets A and C. So taking A, taking C I can see that the 2 and 4 are already contained in A so what we get is just the set A. So that's one of the reasons why I picked this just to show you that if you've got a subset within a set then 
the union just gives you that larger set there. Okay, so here we've got A union C then, which is going to contain the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Okay, the set A itself. Just make that 4 a bit better. Next we've got B intersected with D. Now you'll see why I picked this one, because when we look at the elements that are common to both set B and to the set D, you'll notice there's nothing in common. So what we've got here is the empty set or null set. And remember I showed you in an earlier video, we write that either as two curly brackets like that with nothing in them, or you could write this symbol, a circle with a line through it. The empty or null set. They have nothing in common. Okay, so Next one, B union D, joining together the two sets, B and D. And with this one, we've got 1, 2, 3, 5 and 7 in B. There's nothing in common, but if we join it with D, we're just left with the 8 and 9 to add on as well. So we get a set then that contains the members 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, eight and nine. Okay, now with this one, B complement, everything that's not in B. So everything that's not in B, remember everything outside of B but contained in the universal set here U. So what have we got? What numbers are we not seeing in this set that are in this set up here? Well, that will be the numbers, okay, call them members in this case, 4, 6, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, B complement then. Now with this one, I picked this question just to show you that we don't have to just be working with two sets as we have in, say, these examples here. We can take it up to three sets. So what we've got here is A intersection B, which we've seen is this set here, 1, 2, 3, and 5. Now we want to intersect it with C. So we're looking to see what that set here has in common with the elements in set C. And what we've got here is just the 2. 2 is common to both C and A intersection B. So the answer to this one then is the set with one element in, that element being two. And here I'm combining A and B together, I'm joining them together, the union of them. We've seen that that is this set here and now we take the complement of it. So we're looking for everything not in A union B that's within you. So Looking at that, you should find that you're just looking at 8, 9 and 10. It's not in A union B, but it is still in the universal set. OK, so the answer to this is just those three elements, 8, 9 and 10. So I hope that's given you some idea on that. Now what I want to do next is just show you how we can draw a Venn diagram to show the relationship between these sets. So in the usual way, what we do is draw a rectangle to represent the universal set. So I've called it U here. And so this set contains all these elements here. I won't put them in at the moment. Now we know that sets A and B have elements in common. We've got these ones here. So I know that I can represent this as an overlap of two, let's say, circles representing the sets A and B. And in the middle here, we call this the intersection, this, the area, the region, if you like, that shows that we have common elements. And so I'm going to mark those common elements in. 
that's one, two, three, and five. So just put them anywhere you like. Just put them down here, actually. One, two, three, and then we've got the five. And in this region here, this would represent the elements that are just in A, not in B. And looking at A, we've already used one, two, three, and five. Okay, one, two, three, and five. That leaves us with the four and the six. So I'll just write the four here then, and I'll put six, say, down here. This region in here represents the elements that are just in B, not in A. We've already seen that we've got one, two, three, and five in both of them. So one, two, three, and five from B leaves us just with the seven, which are place out there. Now, the eight and nine for D are not anywhere to be seen in here. So therefore, what I do is I put those just on the outside here, eight, nine, and this would represent the set D. So what I'll do is I'll just border those off, and that will be the set D. Looking also at the set C here, it's got the elements 2 and 4 in. And I can see that here we've got the 2 and 4. So I can border those round, okay, and label that set C. So C, you can see, is totally contained within the set A. C is a subset of the set A. Now, I've got all the elements marked in here except 10. And 10 then is not in the sets A, B, C or D. So it's the only element left and that can be put in this region here. Anywhere, okay, round here. And so that's our typical Venn diagram that shows the relationship between the sets. So I hope that's given you an idea anyway on how to work with these operations and summarize this information up in a Venn diagram. Okay?